give all three questions. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, hey, Jim. <laughs> it's good to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, I got all, all one fella. All right. This evening, we are looking at three different questions, all pertaining to one of them. Uh, this evening, we're talking about the fourth commandment, and we will be uh, discussing the three, well, two other questions regarding this commandment. Uh, if you would please go ahead and turn to Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. This will be our opening text. And our study tonight looks at the fourth commandment. I find that it, this is a relative commandment in the odd times we find ourselves in, uh, trying to do church from home, trying to not gather as the people of God, and keep our distance. We face many distractions, as the church always has, uh, but tonight we're going to look at the value of God's people gathering for worship, why we meet, why the Sabbath is sacred, and how God commands us to rest, and why that is good. Again, we'll be looking at Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. First, that'll be our opening text. And our study up to this point, up to this commandment, has reminded us of the holiness of God. As he gave his commandments to Israel, God's people, through Moses. And the account that I went through a few weeks ago, all, tracing it all the way from, from Joseph up to the point that God gives these commandments. Uh, the previous questions we've discussed is that there's one true God that no thing or person apart from God is to be worshipped. We were reminded of the reverent fear of God, so much so that his people did not want to hear his voice at Mount Sinai. Ryan reminded us last week that we are to use the name of the Lord in a worthy manner, not only in speech, but also in conduct, that we should honor God through the way that we live and the way that we act. And we come to our commandment tonight, number four, that we are to honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. If you would please stand, and we'll read this text, the original account that Moses was given. So question 49, which is the fourth commandment? The fourth commandment is to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this gathering, Lord, that your people would gather, Lord, that we would learn about you through your word and who you are, Lord, that we would worship you in a proper manner based on your word, based on who you are, Lord, remind us tonight that you are good, that your will is good, that you are gracious and merciful towards your people, Lord, teach us tonight by your word, in Jesus' name, amen. May be seated. Thanks, Siri. <laughs> so again, I want to remind you of the context leading up to this text, the relationship that God had with his people, because they fear him and they ought to fear him. This is something that our culture often forgets or doesn't preach on. But God is, God is to be honored as holy, this is the purpose for Sabbath rest. 
This is why we set the Sabbath day apart, is to worship and glorify a holy God. And now that Christ has come, I, I want to make this point now, but I want to refer to it later. Christ has now come. He, he died and was resurrected and ascended. And now that that's taken place, we now worship on Sunday instead of Saturday. We'll discuss that more in a little bit. But this is the first day of the week. This reminds us to prioritize this day. It also teaches us that in all things, we are to give the first fruits to the Lord. So we glorify God in our first fruits, our first time of the week, hopefully the first time of every morning. You are spending time in the word of God. It's important. It's very important that we give God our very best. He is a king. He is mighty. He is holy. And we must remember that. Now, Robert Godfrey made one distinction regarding the Sabbath day within covenantal theology, and he reminds us that the Old Covenant way is different than the New Covenant way. And the Old Covenant way was that the people of God would be commanded to work and obey, and then came rest on the seventh day of the week. Within the New Covenant, now that Christ is, has come, we celebrate on the first day of the week. We celebrate in the assurance that we have within Christ. Then we work because of our assurance, because of the rest that we have in Christ. Let's look now at the Genesis account, Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, and we'll consider our second question tonight. This question uh, defines the requirement of the fourth commandment, specifically when we are to worship and keep the Sabbath. So Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, say this. Pick up my coffee real quick. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. And so let's look at our question. Next question tonight, question 50. What is required in the fourth commandment? And our answer, the fourth commandment requires the keeping holy to God such time set as he appointed in his word, expressly one day, one whole day in seven, to be a holy Sabbath to himself. Now I want to make a few quick distinctions here that, that were helpful for me in, in studying this. First off, God did create all, all things, then rest, as we see in the text here, making the seventh day the Sabbath day, the day of rest. And so it makes sense why the Jews would celebrate on Saturday instead of Sunday. Um, rightly so. That's what they were commanded to do. However, at the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, the resurrection day became the day of rest, making it Sunday, making it the first day of the week. And this change of Sabbath reminds us where we truly find our rest. It's not in our works, but it's in Christ's work and what he has done. In the assurance of salvation that we have in Christ, his resurrection, his ascension, we celebrate those things. We remember those things and we rest in those things. I also want to emphasize that we worship God based on his terms as appointed by his word, this answer states. The Sabbath is set apart by God because he is holy. We worship him based on who he is, not who we want him to be. We've defined when we are to enjoy the Sabbath rest with question 50. Let's look and spend a fair amount of time on question 51, which brings these two previous ones together. And so question 51 says this, how is the Sabbath to be sanctified? And our answer, the Sabbath is to be sanctified by a holy resting all that day, even from such worldly employments and recreations as are lawful on other days, and spending the whole time in the public and private exercises of God's worship. 
except so much as is taken up in the works of necessity and mercy. This is how the Sabbath is to be sanctified. Now, Leviticus refers to the Sabbath day as a holy convocation, a day of solemn rest, both to gather on this day in a holy manner as the people of God, lifting up one voice unto our holy king, and it's a day set apart from the rest, not to work as you would normally do. Also, not just to use for your own pleasure. This is important, that we would rest on the Sabbath day. This is a subject that falls into uh, each Christian's own convictions. However, John Piper would encourage us and tell us to do things that help us better glorify the Lord. That's a big factor. That's very important in our Sabbath rest. We are to do things that help us and enable us to better honor and glorify and serve the Lord. I believe a balance is important here. I don't think we should lean so far in one direction that we must close every single store or, or close the gas station. You can't even go out for lunch and have fellowship in that way, as some would have that conviction, and that's okay. We respect that conviction. But at the same time, the other end of the spectrum is that we use Sunday solely for our own pleasure. So much so that we are not resting. We're not using this day to better worship the Lord. Friends, Sundays are for remembering the great grace that God has shown his people. It reminds us that the work week doesn't save us. The money in the bank doesn't save us. These things are important. We need to work hard. We need to be good stewards of what we have. But money in the bank, the, the job, does not save your soul. What has eternal value? Because the Sabbath day is for remembering, for honoring the eternal truths of who God is. That he has created all things. That in Christ you have been recreated. You were dead. You were very, very dead, and God has made you alive. Rest in that. Embrace that truth every single Sunday. Embrace the truth that you've become one with Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 reminds us, 19 and 20, says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Friends, Sundays are for investing into the first day of the week and using that time for spiritual growth. Things of eternal value. It's a fresh start every single week. New mercies for your last week of failures, sin. Spend extra time this Sunday repenting of your failures the previous week. Because you need it. We need the Sabbath rest. We need to rest in these truths more often than we do. And give God that time. Glorify God with that time. Renew your mind by the word of God every Sunday. Value it. Honor this day as the Lord's day. And as our answer states, this whole day is to be spent in public and private worship of God. I would challenge you, just as I've challenged myself, how much time do you spend in private worship of God on the Sabbath day? How much time do you spend loving the Lord on that day of rest? <laughs> I fail. <laughs> we need to do better. We need to honor God better with our time specifically on the Sabbath day, specifically the day that he's given us to rest in him. Now, the Sabbath day looks both backwards while pointing forward. This rest looks back to the beginning, the pure creative design that God ordained from the beginning and where we as humans fell from. But this also points forward. This points forward to the true state of rest that we will enjoy fully 
in eternity. Like the Garden of Adam and Eve, where things were good, but better to dwell with God in a more full state, to have a unity that is not known by us yet. Friends, Hebrews chapter 13 reminds us that we have no lasting city here, but we seek the city that is to come. And as believers, we're called to a a higher standard, a righteousness that is not natural within us, a righteousness that's found only in Scripture, only within the body of Christ. It's so important that we saturate ourselves in the truth of God and his word with, with the body, enjoying the presence of God. So saturate yourself. Rest in the word. And I would challenge you to actually consider every Sunday how much have you loved the Lord with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength the past week? And, and trust in the Lord and, and receive grace for failing at that? And seek to do better by the Spirit this, this upcoming week. Friends, Sunday should be the most beneficial day for us. I would challenge you also with this. Don't just veg out. It's easy to just put the TV on, do nothing, be lazy. It's so easy, and I'm so guilty of it. But friends, rest in Christ. Do things of eternal value on your Sunday. Receive grace. Receive forgiveness every Sunday and start afresh. Renew your mind by the word of God, as Romans tells us to do. Let me read you the question and answer again. Question 51, the last question and answer. How is the Sabbath to be sanctified? The Sabbath is to be sanctified by a holy resting all that day, even from such worldly employments and recreations as are lawful on other days. And spending the whole time in the public and private exercises of God's worship, except so much as is taken up in the works of necessity and mercy. Friends, use that day. Take advantage of the day of rest that God has given you. Enjoy it. Glorify the Lord. That is our goal. That's the goal of the body of Christ is to glorify him. Seek to love and know the Lord more. Let's go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just consider your greatness tonight. Lord, how mighty and awesome you truly are, Lord, and how small and fragile we are as as people. Lord, but you've made us your own. God, you have bought us by your own blood. May we honor that. Lord, may we seek you daily. And Lord, may we use this day of rest, this Sabbath that you've given us to remember where our rest truly is and that is in Christ and in Christ alone. Lord, may we honor you on this Sabbath day. May we fear you on the Sabbath day of rest, Lord, and that we would have a fresh start every week by your mercy and by your grace. Lord, teach us how to rest in you. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Oh, thanks, brother, so much to pack in such a small amount of time. I'm so thankful and um, actually quite astonished that he was able to do that in that amount of time. <laughs> I just had a few thoughts and comments some things that he touched on already, but I know a lot of questions probably come up in our mind. We know many have differing views on the Sabbath. Some still think it's supposed to be Saturday. Um, We've even had folks leave this church because they were so adamant about that. So don't let it be divisive. People bring that up with you. Um, Some see no connection with it to the Lord's Day, which is clearly taught in Scripture as Sunday, the day as Vogi said, Jesus rose from the dead, which is why we celebrate now on Sunday. And, and we do believe that here at River's Edge, that that is the connection. And in that sense, it is the new Sabbath, although Christ himself is the Sabbath. 
And Paul speaks about this in Romans and Colossians about certain days and observances and people who like to argue and, and cause controversy about it and to stay away from them. All right? So when people want to drag you into that, um, I'm not saying you can't talk about it, but just, just be careful. And then as it said in the answer, the acts of mercy. This is why um, there are certain things people can do on Sundays. If, you know, they're nurses or emergency workers. Someone's house is on fire. We don't say, oh, the Christian firemen can't go help. No, that's foolish. The Pharisees got weird about that. Grandma falls down. Oh, we can't help her till the next day. No. Acts of mercy. It's pretty obvious. God gives us a brain and wisdom. Hebrews 4.9 says this, So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God from his. So just driving home what, what Vogie taught. There remains a Sabbath rest. We know that will be fully known in eternity. And it begins now. We begin celebrating that every Sunday. Now, as believers, Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. Right? That's what he said. He is the Sabbath rest. He said in Matthew 12, he is the Lord of the Sabbath. It's always pointed to him. And so don't let people get you down in the minutia of the details. What can I, I can't do this, and I, or this or that. But use wisdom. As Vogie said, people have different convictions. We need to live in harmony with one another. And there are certain things we definitely should not do <laughs> on Sunday. Probably some things that we shouldn't do any day of the week. And it's interesting, too, the last thing that I'll say is how the, the fourth commandment also teaches that we are to work. It's kind of just assumed in there. Six days you shall work. Are you working? Are you working? Uh, work is actually also a command. So we're told to rest, but if you haven't been working can't really rest from your work. So I will uh, end it there, and we'll see you this Sunday, the Lord's Day, as we celebrate when Christ rose from the dead. One quick um, announcement. There's some baskets in the back, and we might make another announcement about this later or send out an email. But in lieu of baby showers for all the, the mothers who are having babies, we're doing um, baby baskets, and so you can just drop items off in the baskets back there, diapers, wipes, things like that, and then we will deliver them to the mother. So right now there's one for Rachel Gundon and Katie Van Valkenburg. So it's pretty simple. Just bring your items and set them in there, and we'll get them to them. Let's stand and sing to the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, because it's true. And we need to be reminded of it. Mm, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go in his peace.